Welcome to the X Corner. I'm here adding some more mutation to that superhero crew still. I'll be covering the X Comics for the week of July 4th, 2018. Happy Independence Day for my neighbors to the south. This week we have three comics. Astonishing X-Men 13, Hunt for Wolverine Weapon Lost number 3, and X-Men Gold number 31. Spoilers, yeah of course. We'll start with Astonishing X-Men number 13. Writer is Matthew Rosenberg, and the penciler is Greg Land. And we have the backup page for the countdown to extermination by Ed Brisson and Oscar Bazeldois. Havoc is back and looking to start an X team. Unfortunately, it isn't going very well. He gets in trouble with the Avengers, gets kicked out of the X school by Kitty, and told he can't call his team X Men because she owns the rights to the name. And then he blows up a hotel after a bad dream. And then, lastly, while he tries to recruit Beast, the Reavers attack. They seem to be under control of some shady government people, and they want Beast dead. Beast unleashes a secret weapon to save them, and it seems to be an undead banshee. We also get another countdown to extermination at the end, where Warpath and Dazzler are disintegrated by Sentinels 20 years in the future. So the first page of this comic was epic, Havoc destroying a monster. Unfortunately, Rosenberg is feeling the need to tear down Havoc, hopefully before building him back up. It hurt my fanboy feelings. But I trust Rosenberg, and I understand the way stories work, so I'm giving this comic the benefit of the doubt. Now if they continue to make Havoc a laughing stock, I will tear them down. Mark my words. At first the art was a little, well, bad, and I was scared, but after a bit of teething, it seemed to get good, and hopefully that was just some time issue. I do like how the countdown to extermination pages seem to include people from the book, even if Warpath and Dazzler aren't technically on the team yet, they will be. I hope the crossover lives up to the hype they're making for it though. Overall, I'm glad Havoc's back, and I like the fact that not everyone just forgave him for being a supervillain. Even if he was mind whammied, I hope they don't play up too much of his sad sack nature. I always liked the fact that Havoc may have been seen as the lesser Summers brother, but he always did the right thing in the end. Let's hope Rosenberg sees it that way too. This is only getting a 7 out of 10, but I know it's going to get better. Then we have Hunt for Wolverine Weapon Loss number 3. The writer is Charles Soule, and the penciler is Matteo Buffegni. Cypher's throat has been cut by what looks like Wolverine, but he's not dead. Frank grabs him to get him to an Adelan healing thingy, while Misty and Daredevil look for his attacker. They find him. It's Wolverine's cyborg clone, Albert. He seems to be crazy and demanding to know where Elsie is. Elsie was his adopted robot daughter. Daredevil fights him off and gives chase. Albert's about to kill him though, but Misty and Frank show up to shoot him. And then the miraculously healed Cypher finishes him off. On the plane back, Daredevil's meditating to heal up, Cypher is mute and acting weird, and Misty and Frank are hooking up, when Cypher shows up to ruin their fun with a new lead. The mystery isn't over yet. They go back to one of the witnesses they talked to before, and he's dead. And when they barge in, the place explodes. I like how this mini has some twists and turns. I expected Albert to show up in the claws of a killer book, but here he is, and he isn't even the answer to the mystery. Soul seems to have the tone down perfectly, and the noir feel shines through even in a superhero action. You never can tell who you can really trust. One more issue seems quick to tie up all these loose ends, but I hope they can do it. Rating 8.5 out of 10. Lastly, we have X Men Gold number 31. The writer is Mark Guggenheim, and the pencil is Pere Perez. It's the post wedding morning. Rachel wakes up with a hangover, and it seems like Mesmero is there messing things up, too. We cut to Peter and Kitty separating. Peter says he can't be a superhero around her, and heads off to eventually join Havoc's team, it seems. But then we get the great transition, and we're in the days of future past future. Kitty is planning the escape, like in the classic storyline, but it's being updated with current crop of characters, including a one-eyed Cyclops, a one-handed Forge, Enole, Ink, Armor, and others, just to name a few. The escape goes similarly to the classic one, but suspiciously, no Wolverine. Eventually, most of the mutants are killed by the Sentinels, and the few that remain are cornered by armed men and Rachel as a mutant hunting hound she was. She murders her father Cyclops, and is about to finish off Kitty when Pyro and Iceman confront her. Hard cut to what was really going on, Rachel was actually just seeing all this dystopian future, but she was actually fighting the real X-Men in the present. This was a nice follow-up to an emotional issue, with what seemed like another one, with Peter and Kitty separating. The use of the Days of the Future Past was very nice, and I like how it was all in Rachel's mind. It made sense why certain people were there and others weren't. I do hope they follow up with the tease that it was Cassandra Nova's doing in X-Men Red. 
Otherwise, we have two different people messing with Rachel's head. Did they meet up in there and decide whose plan goes first? The art was solid and really did capture the Days of Future Past feel. It seemed obvious by the end that was going on. With all the countdown to extermination stuff, I thought this might be a tie-in. Really fun though, and it's getting a solid 8.5 out of 10. Another week done, and then as the pendulum seems to swing, a solid one. If everything goes as it has, next week will suck. But let's hope that entropy of the universe breaks the cycle of order, and we get a good few weeks in a row for the summer. See you then.